everyone and welcome to Lunch with the Leader this morning. I am here with Demetrius Stanley and we are at Eddie George's Grill 27. Good morning. Wonderful. How are you? I'm doing really good. <laughs> yeah, Thank good. you for responding the same way that I gave it to you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start out. Is it the Ohio State University or Ohio State University? You know, when I was at school, it was Ohio State University, okay. and then all of a sudden we got big time, and then it became the Ohio State University. I don't even know what what the difference is. Uh -huh. Maybe is it the only one? Uh -huh. I don't know, but yes, it is now the Ohio State University. So that's what you say. That's what I say. Because that's what you're supposed to say. That's what the words say. <laughs> okay. Because that's a hot topic now. It's like everywhere you go, the Ohio State University or Ohio Well, when you when you look at it and you, you think about when you put the in front of something, for me and I think a lot of other people, it changes how you think about like if I went around saying I'm the Demetrius Stanley, how do you feel about that? Well you must be the only one. <laughs> that guy. Right, right. So I don't know. It's just an inter it's interesting, but it is what it is. They make enough money, they can do what they call themselves what they want. Okay. <laughs> right. So what advice do you have for aspiring that want to play professional sports? Um, what advice do I have for young people that want to play collegiate sports? Um, it's a or professional. Well, it's two different stories. Um, for college, absolutely go for it one hundred percent. You gotta do the things necessary, get the grades, because first of all, if you're not on the field and you're ineligible, it doesn't matter. So stay in school and go for it 100%, because there's a lot of universities out there, maybe Division One to Division Five, but at least you have an opportunity to play football. Now, NFL, that is a whole nother ball game because there's only 32 th teams, and then there's millions of people that are trying to accomplish that. I say work to get a job, but if you want that dream, dream big, go for it, but have a plan B because um, the opportunity of you actually getting a chance to even try out for a team when I was in school, and this is in the 90s, it was one in a million. So imagine all the attitudes and all the parents that are pushing their kids now to go to these NFL teams or NBA teams to make all, make all this money. It's a lot slimmer now. So I say have a plan B, maybe a plan C, but definitely shoot for the stars. Now you mentioned the parents. So what do you say to the parents of children Don't pressure them because you're going to burn them out. And there's a lot of, I do, I train a lot of kids. Um, I'm a personal trainer also. And one of the things that I've noticed about parents, it's like those dance moms, you know what I'm saying? They're, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're pushing the kid harder than the kid really wants to be. And then all of a sudden you get to about a junior, senior, or junior and senior in high school. Now you're burned out because you've been doing it because your parents pressure, not because you love the sport. Like, thank goodness for me, my parents just said, play what you want. So I happened to be good at football and I loved it and I played it, there was no pressure. So the biggest thing is I'd say naturally, let them play all the sports they can when they're young and their natural ability will push them towards where they're going to be. That's yeah. That's really good. So being in the spotlight as an athlete, do you feel a responsibility towards people that you You know what? <laughs> no, my, um, no, I, I, I didn't, but I was in, I think I was in eighth grade, and this is when it just happened. I, it wasn't like my intention, it just was one of those things that happened. I remember they came to us, the football team, and they said, who who would go to our elementary school and read books to the kids? And like, you know, that'd be second, third, fourth graders sitting in a little circle, you're up with your book. And that's where my community service started. I liked it. And then from that point on, I've been doing it. But it wasn't, I had no intention of ever doing it like that, but it just happened. So you never, so you never were aware? I wasn't aware. Because now it seems like if you were an athlete or you were in the spotlight, that people automatically assume that you have a responsibility for people who are watching you. Well, definitely when you're in the spotlight. But let me tell you something about athletes. <laughs> Athletes play sports, all right? And you know, it's the whole student athlete thing. I don't believe in that. I believe the reason the kid comes to Ohio State is because he's an athlete, student second. So I'll say athlete, student. A lot of people, you know, go the political route and say, no, it's student athlete. And then when it comes to being a role model, we're so young when we're in the spotlight. And, you know, you see people in this light, in this glamorous position when this is an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kid. And imagine what we were doing. And you're letting and telling your kids to look up to this person. He's still making mistakes or she's still making mistakes. So to put that on those young people is a major mistake. 
But the nature of the beast is that's where you are. And whether you take that responsibility as a player or not, that's just where you sit. But I like to tell people, these are kids and you're letting your kid role model be a 21 year old guy that's about to get a million dollars who's going to probably make a lot of dumb mistakes because of it in the meantime. So, it, yeah, I don't know if they should be, but they are. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Now, you mentioned earlier about having backup plans. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a new college and you want to be professional. That's a good idea to not just fake on that. Right. So, on a scale of one to 10, uh-huh. how important was it for you to have a backup plan exiting college? Let me tell you, it was all my mom. My mom, when I was in high school, all I did was, all I, you know, I, I started signing my autograph on my notebook when I was like fifth, sixth grade. And like, I'm gonna be famous, I'm going to the NFL. I just, that's all I said. And then my mom always said, you better have a plan B. You better have something else because it's tough. Now, could I have been that much better if that was my only focus? Maybe, but then if it didn't work and that was my only focus, then where would I, would I have been? So for me, it's like a double-edged sword. Um, so in eighth grade, what made me have what my plan B was, I did, um, it was the, when you follow parents to work, and uh, to you keep the work, but I went with my um, friend Jeff, whose dad was the president of um, the Lawyers Association, the Bar Association, whatever. And I remember when I went to work with him, everybody had a suit and tie on. Everybody, he had this big, nice desk, big, beautiful office. And so for me, success, to be successful, you had to wear a suit and tie. So hence what you see today. So as life went on, I still had that same focus on sports, but then knowing that side of things, that was kind of, and my mom constantly putting in my ear, plan B, plan B. I then said, okay, let me look at business a little bit, see what this is like. And it just happened to happen. And then when I got out of school uh, or got done with the whole NFL Canadian football thing, didn't know what direction to go, but then plan B was here and I'd already learned the networking system and I networked and then here I am today. So tell me where you are today. What are you doing now? Um, I'm part owner in Car- <clears throat> excuse me, Cardinal Healthcare, which we're a home healthcare Medicare agency. We're just hoping to get our doors open in the next few months. Uh, VP of Business Development for Bright Star Care, which is another home health care company, but we're not Medicare, we're private insurance and private duty. And I also have Source Fitness, which is my um, personal training and wellness business. And then Baseline is the actual gym that I do all of my workout, of my training and workout of. Wow. Yeah. So you have a lot of things going on. That's, you have that kind of entrepreneurial spirit as well. Well, yeah. Business owner. It all, it all, it all yeah. 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 Yes, do do my thing. Do your thing. Um, my mom's motto is "Get yours." That's she's always said that. Okay. And you know, I, I read a lot of um, Buffett, one of the richest men in the world. I read a lot of his stuff, and he always says, "When you work, when you have a job, you work for someone. When you own a business, you own a job. And until you invest, you're still you still have a job." And so now I'm just to the point where I've got myself to where I can invest as opposed to owning, and that's. The position you want to be in, so that was my whole goal. So, where can we find? Where can we find you? You spoke about personal training. You can find me anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm everywhere. No, um, I spend a lot of time um, at Bright Star, which is right up with our office is off Henderson and Reed in Arlington, and then Baseline is over in Worthington. That's where the gym is. That I do all my training and wellness stuff out of. So, but I'm pretty much I'm all over town. I cover this town probably on a daily basis. Wow. Yeah. From one side to the next. From there to there to there to there, I'm there. Yeah. Well, you heard it. Sitting here with Demetrius Stanley, 